We continue with Biography, The Tumultuous Life and Times of Lynn Opterbeck. Following their move from Maine in 1982, things went well for the Opterbeck family as they settled into life in Virginia. The church was growing, good things were happening, and Lynn felt on top of his game. But, as fate would have it, dark clouds were gathering over his little acre of land. Clinically speaking, Pastor Opterbeck clearly exhibited suppressed rationalization. In layman's terms, this defense mechanism allowed him to act logically despite being unable to divulge a reasonable excuse for his behavior. The pressures of dealing with the property committee and the church council caused a marked physical change in Opterbeck. His hair, once thick and dark, began to recede at a surprising rate. His logical conclusion was that the church was making him pull his hair out and that hair had to be scattered on the floor of the church somewhere. This led him to obsessively vacuum the carpet in hopes of recovering the lost hairs. He told us it was powdered sugar he wanted to get out of the carpet. He vacuumed all the time. We should have known he had a reason but we just thought he'd go nuts. Unknown to the congregation, Opterbeck purchased a toupee and hired himself out as a used car salesman. Sales were not good, and the plan was quickly abandoned. He took to hanging out with a 60s retro beatnik group, but the wild party life was not for him. He found the hairline issue all-consuming. His weight shot up, and his friends were concerned but this internal demon would soon be overcome by a new concern, one that would threaten to tear their family apart. Nina's decision to leave the preschool and take that airline pilot job really hit Pastor hard. I don't think he saw it coming. With his wife jetting off to places far and wide, Opterbeck realized that the current program at the church was not exciting enough. He reacted by starting new ideas, looking for that gimmick that would bring him acclaim. Opterbeck's new programs were strange, to say the least. He moved the congregation out of the building and tried his new idea called field preaching. The concept ended after the first snowy Sunday morning. Next, he tried a new discipleship program called the Bathrobe Apostles. But the cost of sending members out in false beards and bathrobes were high and eventually the entire concept was rebuked by the Synod. The Jesus Circus concept flopped despite Opterbeck's willingness to play water balloon target Sunday after Sunday. In a final act of desperation, Opterbeck turned to the Amish faith in hopes that he could turn it all around. Nothing worked. But then, as happens with men of God, a miracle occurred. He was just standing there in the tarmac holding this kid when Nina gunned the engine right into his ear. It seemed to blow all the problems right out of his head. A real miracle. Clear-headed and focused, Opterbeck redoubled his efforts to lead the church and to make an effective impact on people's lives. The congregation blossomed and grew, and in the end, all was good again. The girls finished school and moved on with their lives, and after 18 solid years in Virginia, Lynn and Nina got the traveling bug and returned to New England to begin a new chapter in their lives. Coming up next, the New Hampshire experiment. How will New England Lutherans adapt to worshiping in an igloo?